Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> January the 26th. Wow, day 19. We are we are coming into the final stretch of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And um, again, I want to say thank you to all of you who've participated. Miss Ruth, you're the first name to pop up. Good morning to you. Uh, so glad to have you with us in the process. Landon, good morning, young man. Um, proud of Proud of all of our young people that have really plugged in. Um, it's been very, very cool. Lynch's, good morning. There's another Miss Savannah, uh, one of our, our young moms and a teacher. And I'm very, very proud of all that you do as I think about all of the ones that we have in the school system uh, that are fighting the good fight. So thank you for what you do. Miss Lauren, Melody, good morning, everybody. Tina, uh, good to see you this morning. Um, Robin Rosado, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Glad so many of you uh, are with us and finishing strong. Thank you. Good morning to my lovely wife. Um, Brandy, good morning. Jason, good to have you guys with us. So uh, grab your journals this morning, um, and I want to dive in a little bit. And uh, got to be honest, uh, when I first started diving into this topic um, this morning, I was uh, at a bit of a loss. I, I, was, uh, I, was, I was struggling a little bit. Um, and, uh, but man, I, I, I feel like the Holy Spirit kind of downloaded something kind of cool or a, a thought anyway, a way to connect. So, uh, good morning, Ruth and Beth and Wises and Miss Rebecca. I see so many of you coming on this morning. Uh, and again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, take a moment to encourage somebody else. Say good morning to someone else this morning that you, uh, see them and that you recognize their diligence in getting up. Um, Good morning to the Oink and Moo. I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, let me read through uh, these, these scriptures and uh, we kind of see what maybe God would speak to us this morning. So in your journal, um, it, it, it talks about today praying for uh, persecuted followers of Jesus. So 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. But he, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. I don't know about you, but I wrestle with that one. Um, I wrestle with that one in my flesh, in myself, uh, because I can be a control freak. I can try to take the reins of everything. Uh, I can try to control everything and, and move everything. But it says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses. So the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insult, hardship, persecution, and calamity. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Isaiah 41 and 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Um, Man, thinking about specifically a couple of folks over the last couple of days have been dealing with some stuff, and uh, I'm praying that that scripture just gets deep into you and deep into your soul. Hebrews 13 and 3, remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated since you also are in the body. I'm going to come back to that one. That's, that's where I want to camp today. But 1 Corinthians 12 and 20 and then 26 as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, <clears throat> all rejoice together. So in thinking about praying for the persecuted church, I, I struggled a bit. Um, I don't know about you, but you know, if you have not experienced something, it is very hard uh, to relate. It, it's hard maybe even to consider how to pray. We can try to stir up emotions. We do that really good in the church. We'll bring some video of, of you know, what somebody's going through or suffering children that don't have food or are malnourished. Or, and we try to stir emotion. But, uh, but oftentimes, at least for me, and maybe I just don't have a heart, but oftentimes for me, that's short-lived, right? We're, wow, that's terrible. Here, here's some money. Walk away and go on with my life. So in thinking about this this morning, I was wrestling because I was God. I was I was kind of saying, God, you know, I, I don't I don't know what it's like really to be persecuted. Yeah, we take some hits here and there, uh, but our nation is 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 a far cry from what I would say is 
persecution. That may come in the future, uh, but, but not right now. So then it hit me um, I, as I was reading this, and I read back at this Hebrews 13 and 3. Remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them and those who are mistreated since you also are in the body. And I read it differently. Um, so I looked up that word body in the original language, and it actually means corpse um, and, and flesh. And so, yes, it probably is referring to we're in the body of Christ, but it hit me this way. And this is what the Holy Spirit was. It says, remember those who are in prison uh, and those who are mistreated since you are also dealing with your body. And, and I was thinking about what we've been talking about now for like three weeks is the, is the reality that we're dealing with uh, our, our body. We, we are in the flesh. How is that compared to a prisoner? Let's think this through. Well, first of all, let's talk about a prisoner and what they need to do when it comes to the spirit, right? We've been talking about spirit, soul, body. We've been talking about these three parts to us. When it comes to the spirit, a prisoner, someone in prison right now, someone who's being persecuted or, or is a captive, needs to sense his presence. And isn't that true of us? That as we go through our day, like we can completely relate to times when we sense his presence and then times when we're not paying attention to. And we've been talking about our need to align with him. Boy, is there, a, if you're in prison or if you're captive in that process, you, you, you need to align with his spirit. Okay, God, you must be doing something, but this is chaos and what I see. And we can relate. Like that's, that's what we deal with every single day. So I start walking through uh, how we are just like, because we are in the flesh, we are just like the captives. We can relate. I can relate to this person uh, who's being persecuted. Why? Well, let's get into the soul. In their mind, uh, one of the things we pray for for the persecuted church is access to the word, uh, right? They, they need that renewal of the word inside of them. And so we pray that somehow they might get access to the word, which is the same thing you and I need. It's, it's the same thing that you and I struggle with. Um, and, and maybe we're a prisoner to the body, uh, because we're so focused on what the body is screaming and what the flesh is saying that we won't reach over to the shelf and grab that word that's sitting right there on the shelf. Um, and so we understand what it means to go through a time period where I've not read the word and I'm struggling in my mind. Um, causes us to not be able to focus on God's purposes um, and the reality that uh, we need to be renewed to truth daily. I, I think about, man, if you're a captor and you're in prison, you probably need to be renewed to truth minute by minute. Um, but isn't that true of us as well? Since we are in this body, in this flesh, uh, we can completely relate when it comes to their will of a captor. They need wisdom and discernment. Like, how do you deal with your captors, right? What kind of decisions do you make? How do you use your time, your talent, and your treasure? We've talked about all these things with us. Uh, we, we, we get it. Um, it just intensifies it for somebody who maybe is persecuted or a captor, but aren't we as well? And, and, and man, I just kept the Holy Spirit saying over and over, you have more of an understanding of a, or a re, what it is to relate. It's just you have more comfort so it masks the, the connection that you have with somebody who is physically a captive somewhere in the persecuted church. And then uh, we pray that they would be able to inspire their captors, right? We pray that for the persecuted church that by the way they do things, they would inspire their captors. But isn't that also true of us? That, that the way that we go to work today, the way that we choose to make decisions today, that we would inspire those around us uh, maybe who are are lost in the process. And then I started thinking about the emotions inside the soul of someone who might be persecuted. And that is, you know, two two big words popped out and that is hope. Hope that, that, that God is still got this and that there's an ending, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and peace. The ability even in the middle of the chaos uh, to sense the peace of God. And boy, can I relate to that. Right, that I need to make sure that I hold on to in my emotions, hope, and find his peace. Uh, and that really comes from trusting him. And then I thought, man, in the physical, right, the body, the actual physical body, uh, we pray that they would have tenacity, 
that they have the ability to keep going in the process. And wow, don't we know what that feels like? I mean, when the alarm goes off for me to get ready to come to 5 a.m. prayer, my body is screaming at me. I don't want to do this again today. And uh, and yet we have to have a tenacity. And so we we have that and we can relate what it feels, what it must feel like to be captive physically, to just have the desire to even stand up or to get up. Right. And and a certain amount of pain tolerance comes in paying, praying for the persecuted church or those who are captive. Same is true for us. Um, pain tolerance really is the answer to self-control in, in, in so many ways. And then obviously that they would have time of worship and that they would share the gospel. And so as I'm walking through all this, I'm like, God, I've never thought about this before, but I have, other than the physical comfort, when you pull the physical comfort away, there's so much that I can relate to someone who has been captured, someone who is dealing with persecution because we deal with some of the same things. So, um, I don't know, I, I look at it as, as, as this morning we pray for the persecuted church, uh, but we do it from the, from the, the remembrance and understanding of, of, of us, of, yeah, I, 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 I get it. Like, I, I do have more of a connection. Uh, the difference is, is maybe I have air conditioning. The, the difference is, is I can go get in my car. The difference is, is, is that I do have food when I want food and the food that I want. And so, man, I just want to encourage you this morning that let's pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world who are struggling because of persecution that are put in places of that are not like the United States and they don't have the freedom. And for those of you that say, you know, gosh, it's just kind of hard to relate. And I don't know how to um, connect. Hopefully, maybe I made a little connection for you today. Hopefully you can understand that the same, some of the same struggles on the same level are really the same struggles. We're still dealing with aligning ourselves to the spirit of God, dealing with our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, getting those things in a healthy, proper place and aligned with the spirit as opposed to the flesh. But we're walking around with this flesh that is telling us, I want this and I want that. And we, and we learn self-control in the process. So um, I don't know how the Holy Spirit will speak to you, but but kind of that's what he was saying to me this morning. So let us pray for the persecuted church um, and let us remember what God has been teaching us in the process of dealing with our spirit, soul, and body. Let me pray for you and uh, get out of the way and let you uh, work with the Holy Spirit this morning. Father, uh, thank you for helping me to make this connection, uh, this, this understanding of of at least a little bit of a connection of what it means to go through what these folks are going through. And we do, we cry out to you right now uh, for those that are suffering, for those who are captive, for those who are being persecuted. Uh, we pray and bleed, we, we plead God for safety, especially over women and children uh, in, in, in countries that are just war-torn or religiously torn. Um, we ask that your Holy Spirit would comfort them today we pray, God, that they would align with your spirit. We pray for their mind and their will and their emotions, uh, that you would give them a tenacity in that and a peace in their emotions. You would give them great decisions uh, to make even the small little decisions, the way they do things, to inspire their captors. And we pray, God, that you would strengthen their bodies to be uh, tenacious, to continue moving forward in whatever reason you've called them to that story. So God, we, we thank you and we ask you for groups like the Voice of the Martyrs and those who try to work with the persecuted church. Uh, would you strengthen them? Would you, would you give them great wisdom on how to reach, serve, and love these folks? And God, would you help us to remember the realities of our spirit, our soul, and our body? Uh, and just this day, on this day Friday, that we understand uh, that all has to be surrendered to you. And so guide us, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. We'll see you tomorrow morning.